Welcome to Navigate STL Schools, a podcast. My name is Anastasia, and we are here with Adam Lane of the Treasurer's Office. Hi, Adam. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you today? I am well. So you've been on the show before, so we know a little bit about your education journey. So tell us about your new role with the Treasurer's Office. Yeah, so I've been serving as a treasurer for the city of St. Louis for two years now. So April 20th will make uh, two years in the role. And what that means is I manage the money for the city. So I uh, manage our investment accounts. I make sure that all of our city employees get paid um, biweekly. And if they don't, I hear about it. (laughs) Uh, And I also have an opportunity to make sure that I can realize my vision of having a city and its residents financially fit through our Office of Financial Empowerment, Mm -hmm. where we do uh, whole home financial literacy. So we have programs for adults to make sure that they can live their best financial life. And then we also have programs for you to make sure that they are being financially literate children that grow up to be financially literate adults. So financially literate children, what does financial literacy mean for for, a ch- for anybody, honestly, but for a child? That's a great question. Um, I think about my experience. So I was a finance major in uh, college. And I left high school and college realizing that I actually didn't know that much about personal finance. And coming from a low-income home, finances were something that was talked about in a different way. So, way. In a very stressful way. So I was told that debt was just something that you don't have, but not actually what debt is, um, what credit is, and how to build uh, good credit. It was just don't buy anything you can't afford. So financial literacy, especially with youth, is making sure that they understand all the financial instruments that are out there so they understand what a bank account is so that they can grow up to be a bank because we have a a large population of underbanked and unbanked um, African-Americans in St. Louis. And so understanding what bank products are out there, how to use them to their advantage and make finances not so scary so that they can make smart decisions later down the road. So speaking of smart decisions, why are you here today if you're in the treasurer's office? That is a great question, and I get it a lot. So why why even care about public education? Why is education important to managing funds at the city level? Uh, I do believe that for elected officials, for city officials, it's uh, our duty to make sure that the city is growing. And yes, there are specific roles and responsibilities or specific responsibilities I have with my role as treasurer. But overall, that larger goal is to make sure that the generations coming behind us are prepared. So it's not enough to say, all right, I did my job as treasurer and I managed the money and, you know, bills were paid, but making sure that I'm looking forward to see who, how can we put things in place for those generations that are coming up. Um, So that's why I'm here today. So in addition, like I was saying with our Office of Financial Empowerment, wanted to create programs and initiatives to make sure that those generations, those treasurers yet to come, um, know what they're doing and have an affinity for it. So you spoke about like financial literacy and communities and things like that. Does this idea of financial literacy in terms of like how schools are funded, can this, this help impact the future generation in that way? Absolutely. Um, So right now, and when I was on the school board, one of the things that I fought for was a change to the funding formula Mm -hmm. um, at the state level, because we there's so much uh, discord in the discussion Mm -hmm. um, around funding for uh, for our schools, especially in the city. But we realized that we're getting really the scraps from what the state puts out. Um, And that's the real lack of resource there. Um, But with that, there is an opportunity to get things right financially. So knowing that we have people in the district that understand this funding formula, a lot of times when people see budgets, they see numbers, they're like, just make it work or just give us more money, but not necessarily how they can use that money to their advantage and be strategic with it. Um, And then I think that we also need, you know, the lack of a K-12, a public K-12 financial literacy curriculum is not helping. So right now, students will have maybe a semester of personal finance. Um, That's more than I got. (laughs) From one of their teachers, their sophomore or or junior year. And I I can't tell you what they learned in that, but I know students graduate saying, I wish I knew this about my personal finance. I wish I knew what my credit score was coming out of high school. I wish I know that I knew that my mom might have opened something up in my account um, and that let my credit score go down. So these are all things that I think do play a um, play a role together in supporting our school structures. So wait, are they like teaching sophomores how to balance checkbooks or I mean, like, we're not talking credit and investments and 
That's a great question. I don't even know. I don't even know how to. I don't even know what balancing a checkbook means in 2023 <laughs> because of all the different tools that we have. But, uh, but yeah, I, I don't. I really don't know what it is. Yeah, because I would say that was probably the extent of my personal finance education uh, in like a home ec class. Mm -hmm. um, so as you think about like these tools that are coming out of the treasurer's office to help this next generation be more financially literate and have a more stable foundation when it comes to uh, all things finance, but also education. What are some other things that are going on in the treasurer's office that are primarily affecting the youth? Absolutely. So um, I'll start with one thing that you just mentioned, with it, which is investing. So there's a lot of misinformation out there. So if you're on Instagram, you're on any form of social media, mm -hmm. some ad will pop up or some fake account will pop up about invest here and get this partial share of Bitcoin. And I always tell youth when I talk to them that Bitcoin and you know crypto and investing is not a bad thing, but there's so much misinformation out there to get your money and make it feel like, all right, now I don't trust crypto and I don't trust Bitcoin. I don't trust investment. I don't trust banks. Um, and I don't trust my, my personal finance. So uh, really what we're trying to do is combat the misinformation that's out there and arm young people with the tools that they need um, to, again, make smart financial decisions. We are working on launching a program I'm really excited about, uh, which is a teen investment program, which is a cohort model four year program where students will start in ninth grade and end in 12th grade. And they will have a real investment fund of $50,000 that they will manage and make decisions about, um, which is great. And it's a good hook. But the big goal is that they understand the concepts of investing. They understand the concepts of finance in that way, but know that these are things, these concepts are things that they can learn in ninth grade all the way to 12th grade and continue on with that if they want. And we're hoping to have uh, financial advisors in the St. Louis area who look like them so that they can know that these are careers that are possible for them. Um, so that's one thing. And that's with our, our older group. And then our flagship program is our college kids program, which starts a $50 savings account for students when they start and when they enter kindergarten. And again, another good hook, it's like, hey, we're giving you money for college and they can do activities to earn money in their account. But the bigger goal with that whole home financial literacy is having parents start saving early. So even if they don't have $50,000 in that savings account by the time that student goes to college, it changes their mindset and changes the, the actions that they take. So knowing that they have it later down the road saying maybe on their fifth birthday instead of um, a two thousand dollar birthday party maybe it's a one thousand dollar birthday party and then a thousand of those dollars go into the account or instead of getting those new jordans uh for um for that 11th birthday maybe that five hundred dollars or three hundred dollars goes into the savings account so different ways to think about planning for the future and allowing them to ask questions early about college so where does the initial $50 or $50,000 mm -hmm. come from for these different accounts? Absolutely. So the with the investment account, we are partnering with a firm in St. Louis, so a local St. Louis firm who really wants to increase their footprint in, in, the, in the community. And so they are putting up the funds for that. So we're really uh, happy that they're stepping up and stepping in in that way. Uh, with the College Kids program, the initial $50 comes from us and it comes from parking ticket revenue, which is another thing that falls under my responsibility. So if you've ever gotten a parking ticket in the city, you're helping kids go to college. <laughs> Some of you might be single handedly sending kids <laughs> to college. Don't pay for the meter. <laughs> Um, so how do kids get involved in these programs? Yep. So our College Kids program is a blanket program. So as long as you go to... Uh, a long, as long as a student is in a St. Louis public or charter school in the city, uh, they should already have an account. So we have MOUs with all the public schools in the city. Um, so they're automatically enrolled. And then we send out welcome packets to all the parents so that they have the sign up information, they have access to the accounts and the accounts are open in the student's name. Um, so yeah, so as long as you go to a city school, if you're in K through seven right now, because we go every year with the program, they have an account. Um, and it's open, so they just have to engage. They can go to our website, stlcollegekids.org, to find out more. Uh, with the program that we're looking to launch, it will be open to high school students within SLPS to start. And then we're looking to grow and expand that. And that will be uh, application-based. We'll be working with the districts and school sites and teachers to, to be able to get students into the programs. 
And you said they can do activities to earn money for their account. What kind of activities can they, they do? They can. So just this past week, we had two events for our, our youth. And in this, you know, climbing out of this COVID time, we're doing virtual activities to make sure more people can participate, but also keep uh, our students and families safe. So uh, Monday, we had a game show night where we had different questions. So financial literacy questions like, what is the difference between a credit card and a debit card? Um, what are ways that you can earn money? So we have a, a game show and we had a host, uh, one of our team members, Mo Money was his, uh, was oh, his like name. Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can, we'll say that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like Missouri Money. Um, and he was our game show host. And so students answered uh, questions and by participating in that, whether they answered a question or not, uh, they got a $5 incentive directly into their savings account. And then last night we had a family savings night. So we do that once a quarter and we have a bank partner which will present on some different aspect of financial literacy. And then again, by participating in that, answering a few questions, students earn more incentives into their account. And how do families learn about these activities? Mm -hmm. So we, once we, uh, we send out emails. So we send out emails, we'll do, uh, we'll post on our social media as well to let people, let our families know that we have these events coming up and they just sign up on Zoom and we hop on that Zoom link and we have a good time. So do families get like some sort of debit card or access to the account? Mm -hmm. So our accounts are held at All True Credit Union and they have access to the account. So they have an online portal for the account where they can log in and see all the activity. They can go in person to an All True branch and make a deposit or see what their balances are. And when can they uh, remove money from the accounts? So when they graduate from high school. So these accounts are strictly for college saving and we know that emergencies do come up. So we encourage families to reach out because we do help um, and tr try to provide financial resources mm -hmm. for, for families in need. But we open these in the student's name for a reason so that parents can't take out. They can put in, but they can't take out. Um, so they, they have access to these accounts once they turn 18 and graduate. And you said it's open to uh, students that are in public schools, so public district schools or public charter schools. If yep. you happen to move from St. Louis City to St. Louis County or from a public-based school to a private school, how do those accounts transfer? That's a great question. So we will keep it open. So we cannot, can since we're using city funds to fund it and it's a city-based program, public program, um, if a student goes to outside of, they go outside of the city, they go to a private school, all the funds that they've earned stay in their account. So whatever they've earned, that can be frozen. And then because it's in the student's name at a public uh, bank like Altru, they can always make deposits on their own. They just won't be eligible for the incentive dollars that we provide, but they can still keep the account open. And when they graduate, they still access the account. And another reason why we keep it open in case they transfer back, we want to make sure it's not a re-enrollment process, but it stays there. So thinking about your time as an educator, as a school board member, how has it informed the work that you do with the treasurer's office? Because this all seems like one big financial curriculum. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully we can uh, get them to adopt it. <laughs> um, it informs everything that I do. So uh, I'll often talk about my journey uh and especially in politics. But like I was saying, the, the vision goes beyond just the duties and responsibilities, but how am I using my role to make St. Louis better in all the ways that we can? And if we're doing things that are not focusing on our youth, not focusing on our families and their um, upward mobility, then we're really not doing anything. And all the progress that we're making is very static. So I look back to my first years in the classroom and everything that I do and how I advocate and how I show up in spaces is all about um, who I know I'm advocating for. So those students that I had back when I was a 22 year old teacher teaching 16, 17 and 18 year olds um, who are now 20 and 30 year olds, um, knowing that I'm doing it for them. So seeing their faces and knowing that I wanted to increase opportunities for them in the classroom of in a classroom of 30 and now with a city of 300,000, just making sure that I'm always looking toward increasing opportunities so that those, those young people can be the future leaders of this city and be proud of their city. And then how are you working with schools? If a school leader wants to get in contact with you to present more to their families and their teachers or parents want to get in contact to learn more about the program, how can they find you? Yep. So they can find us. Um, if they type in STL Treasure, they can find anything about us. Uh, so we have our stltreasure.org website. 
our College Kids website, STL College Kids, our STL OFE, our Office of Financial Empowerment.org site, and then on social media. So if you can find us any way, get in contact with us. We want to support. Um, if you want to show up to City Hall, room 220 or suite 220, I'm there. And uh, me and my College Kids program manager will help you out. For adult financial literacy, we have an on-site fi uh, financial well-being coach at City Hall. So you can also show up and get signed up for that if you want to increase your credit score, uh, reduce debt, start a savings plan, all of that. So we're very accessible. We want people to reach out. And then we go to parent-teacher conferences, different events that students have, community events. Um, I try to get into schools probably three times a month to read about financial literacy to kids. And we also give out incentives and in, in books there, too. Um, so, yeah, so we're everywhere. Uh, you can find us online. You can find us in person. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time, Adam. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys for listening to Navigate STL Schools, a podcast. We'll catch you on the next episode.